It is my pleasure and privilege to welcome you to Avondale's 2018 graduation service, where we boast the largest cohort of HDR students in Avondale's history. I want to begin by welcoming God as the grand presider over these proceedings. For over a century, he has been our eternal witness, and his breath has unfailingly rested over our halls of learning. So today, from his breath, we draw our gratitude to praise him for the gift of each of our graduates of 2018. Welcome. Avondale is honored to have on the platform today several dignitaries. The Honorable Mr. Greg Piper, MP, the State Member for Lake Macquarie, Pastor Glenn Townend, Chair of Avondale College Council and President of the Adventist Church in the South Pacific region, Dr. Jeannie Trudel, President of Christian Heritage College, Brisbane, our keynote speaker for this morning. A special welcome to Jeannie. We look forward to hearing from you. I wish to note also other distinguished guests who are with us, including members of Avondale College Council, sponsors of awards and scholarships, members of Avondale College of Higher Education support groups, faculty and staff. Avondale will not be what it is without your commitment, contribution and support. I want to also mention Mr. Rizwan Ahmed and Dr. Ashok Chanda from the Universal Learning Group the Melbourne location for Avondale's Bachelor of Business course. Graduates of 2018, to you most of all, I give a very auspicious welcome. This is your moment of arrival and your moment of departure. Your stories bind you today to a long line of graduates with whom you now share Avondale as both your alma mater and your spiritual home. We honor your success as we honor your parents, relatives, and friends, and those who have walked with you as witnesses of your dreams, your challenges, and your success. We, with you, cherish their presence here as witnesses of this important threshold to your future. We wish that you enjoy every moment of today. I would also at this time like to acknowledge Charles Sturt University, our mentoring university in respect to our university college aspirations. A defining aspect of this relationship means that CSU regards Avondale's degrees as equal to their own. Today, all of Avondale's higher education graduates will receive a testimony that is jointly conferred by both Avondale and CSU's governing bodies. This reflects the mutual respect and trust each institution has for the other. And finally, we acknowledge again our God and Savior Jesus Christ as the creator, provider, and supreme owner of all things. We respectfully acknowledge the Awabakal people who are the traditional owners of this land we pay our tribute to, tribute to elders past and present and acknowledge their care for this country over countless generations. We recognize their, con their continuing contribution and we know that they, make the, that they make a significant contribution to the life of this region. And we pray that we can work together to leave a legacy of reconciliation, justice, and hope for all future Australians. And now I invite you to stand for the national anthem after which we will remain standing for the invocatory, invocatory prayer. Thank you.
for the invocatory prayer, we're going to read from Psalms 145. I will read a section and then I would invite you to all respond in the congregation section, including academic staff. Psalms 145. I will exalt you, my God the King. I will praise your name forever and ever. Every day I will praise you and extol your name forever and ever. Praise the Lord and the most worthy of praise. His greatness no one can have. One generation commends your works to another. They tell of your mighty acts. They speak of the glorious splendor of your majesty. And I will meditate on your wonderful works. The Lord is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and rich in love. The Lord is good to all. He has compassion on all he has made. All your works praise you, Lord. Your faithful people extol you. Your kingdom is everlasting kingdom, and your dominion endures all the The Lord is trustworthy in all he promises, and faithful in all he does. The Lord upholds all who fall, and lifts up all who are bowed down. The Lord is near to all who call on him, to all who call on him in truth. Let every creature praise his holy name forever and ever. We acknowledge and welcome your presence with us today, Lord. Be glorified in this service and in the lives of our graduates, we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Our scripture reading comes from the book of Mark, chapter 5, verses 18 to 20. As Jesus was getting into the boat, the demon-delivered man begged to go along, but he wouldn't let him go. Jesus said, go home to your own people. Tell them your story, what the master did, how he had mercy on you. The man went back and began to preach in the Ten Towns area about what Jesus had done for him. He was the talk of the town. I invite those of you who are able to stand and sing with me this year's graduation hymn. Blessed assurance. Submission, all is at rest. I in 
my Savior, am happy and blessed, watching and waiting, looking above, filled with His goodness, lost in His love. Professor Rowanfeld, Dr. Trudell, Pastor Townend, to all the academic staff and staff of Avondale College, to all the guests who are here to honour graduates today, but mostly to the graduates, I want to say a very warm welcome here to this fabulous chamber and to thank Avondale College once again for having me as part of this amazing celebration of your achievement. This is, I believe, perhaps the 14th year that I've been here, and it's uh, wonderful to see Avondale College as it's gone on its journey to seek a higher place of higher education. And Dr Fernandez has uh, mentioned that relationship with Charles Sturt University and I have to say I think it's uh, a wonderful part of the, this future for Avondale College. But uh, if I can just acknowledge the wonderful pomp and circumstance that occurs here in Lake Macquarie each year of this graduation, as the local state member I'm so proud to see such a wonderful recognition of achievement being carried out here in Lake Macquarie. It's befitting of such an achievement that there is so much pomp and circumstance around your achievement. However, while I look here across the audience, I see yourselves uh, uh, expecting or waiting for, anticipating uh, coming up here and receiving your certificates of achievement, your attainment. I look to your family and friends and see this great pride in your achievement. But I have to say the best part of the day, and I see as you're fanning yourselves there, the best day is, the best part of the day is when it's all over. <laughs> and you go out there and I see the explosion of joy, the coming together of family and friends, the photos, the, the, the just the wonderful joy of your achievement and this going forth, this sign of going forth into this next stage of your lives. Whatever you do, you've been well set up for the path ahead by your time here at Avondale College. I have no doubt about that at all. As you go on, and I imagine knowing the cohort that comes through Avondale College, you'll go far and wide around the world, that you will be well placed to have, leave a big mark in those areas that you enter into. Many of you will go on to further education, I know, but you have been well founded in your studies here. As you go forth, of course, you'll never be able to leave behind your time here in Lake Macquarie. It's always going to be part of your lives. And I'm very proud to acknowledge, of course, that you have been a big part of Lake Macquarie as, if I can say it to Professor Rahnfeld, as is Avondale College, because it is a very, very much a part of our local community. So, look, all I can say is 
I'm very proud to be here. I'm in awe of what you have achieved and I wish you all, each and every one of you, all the best for your futures. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you, Greg. 14 graduations. You know, if you'd started back then, you could have graduated about four times. <laughs> so, an, an opportunity missed. Uh, this is called the President's Remarks. The first remark I actually want to make is, why don't we have this at five o'clock in the morning? Um, I, can, I can testify to you that it was a lot cooler at five o'clock this morning. 2018 marks Avondale's 121st year of continuous operation. While making a vital contribution to Adventist higher education in the South Pacific region, Avondale is also making an increasingly important contribution to higher education in New South Wales and in the Lake Macquarie and Central Coast regions. I could talk to you about Avondale's quality educational programs. Well, I, don't, I don't really need to do that. Our graduates, soon to be graduates, are the best advertisement for that. So I want to talk to you about what makes Avondale different. And this relates very closely to the reasons for our existence. And the best mode by which I can do that is to take a cue, a cue from our graduating class motto and tell you some of our stories. Our students are still passionate and involved in mission, even cross-cultural mission. During July, 12 of our seminary students, along with two of their lecturers, travelled to Fiji for a 19-day immersive ministry experience in Fiji's second largest city. They partnered in pairs with, local, with seven local Adventist churches to present a 10-part evangelistic series. And the series ended with a baptism on July 28, with 86 people from the churches in which the students partnered declaring their commitment to follow Jesus Christ. Some of those bap baptised had not had previous contact with the church. That, I want to tell you, is the Avondale difference. Thirteen Avondale students attended the United Nations Ninth University Scholars Leadership Symposium in Bangkok, Thailand in August. The symposium was designed to help students develop leadership and life skills for global engagement through learning from professional trainers, life coaches, humanitarian workers, and through networking with other students. Although they missed a few classes at the beginning of second semester, these Avondale students came back on fire with the ideas of how to make a difference in our world. That's Avondale students for you. Avondale should also be a thought leader. Avondale has submitted an application to the National Tertiary Education Regulator for, for University College Authority. And as a, an institution on a trajectory to become a university, we take seriously our responsibilities to be a thought leader in our church, in our church community and in the wider community. Our scholarship and research should be making a significant, a significant contribution and our stakeholders can be proud of that contribution. Dr Wendy Jackson prepared scripts for video form supplementary material for the World Church's Adult Bible Study Guides. And those videos were filmed on Avondale's Lake Macquarie campus using Avondale staff and students. Speaking of Wendy Jackson, she was commissioned to an Adventist ministry on October 10. And again, Avondale stood out as a thought leader in our Adventist community in regard to the recognition of women in ministry. Avondale's Dr Darren Morton aims to lift the life of 10 million people through the Live More project. He and Dr Jason Hins made a good start toward that goal 
with the more than 100 first year teaching students who participated in the LIFT project attached to the mandatory Foundations of Wellbeing Unit. 92% reported the inter intervention has a positive, had a positive impact on their wellbeing and resilience. Professor Brett Mitchell, as the lead author, has had two articles on infection control accepted in a world-ranking medical journal, something almost unprecedented. Even though a small player in the Australian research space, we are making a difference. Avondale also takes seriously its responsibility to engage with the community and especially as a leader in the private higher education sector. And nowhere probably is that better illustrated than in the Avondale sponsored higher education pri private provider quality network which is facil facilitated by Professor Jane Fernandez. Our colleagues in, institution, in other institutions highly value the contribution that Avondale is making in fostering excellence across the sector. Avondale also gratefully acknowledges the importance of the relationships it has with Charles Sturt University. Peak bodies like the Council of Private Higher Education and the Australian Council for Private Education and Training, Sydney Adventist Hospital, Sanitarium Health and Wellbeing, the Adventist Development and Relief Agency, Adventist Schools Australia and the Seventh-day Adventist Church at all levels. These and other connections are vital in making Avondale what it is. Not only is Avondale in, as an institution engaged with the world around us, but our students are as well. For instance, Avondale Business School students in their final year unit, Strategic Responses in Business, competed all semester in a globally run computer simulation and ranked in the top seven worldwide in most of the success measures. The students managed a, fic a fictional computer sensor company and were required to make over 160 decisions involving marketing, finances, human resources, production, and research and development. They ranked in the top seven in four of the seven success factors, beating 587 other teams from universities around the world. Our students and graduates make Avondale what it is. 2018 has been full of opportunities and challenges for Avondale. In fact, the whole higher education space in Australia continues to face uncertainties, as, and especially is that so for private providers like Avondale. We're grateful for the fact that Avondale has Commonwealth supported places in the priority areas of education and nursing, and also for the really strong support from the church and its members. This is a good place to graduate from. About 90% of our students are employed during the first four months following their graduation. And compare that figure across Australia's university sector. Keep sending your children and your grandchildren and your great-grandchildren to Avondale. It's a good place to return to for homecomings and, further, and for further education. We need more students. There is so much that I've left out of this report. People will say, why didn't you tell my story of PhD completions by staff, books and journal articles published, the massive documentation, thousands and thousands of pages of documentation prepared for our university college application, staff members moving on after making outstanding contributions to Avondale. However, we are really here to celebrate the achievement of our 320 graduates, including four PhDs. I want to congratulate all of you on your achievements and to acknowledge as well the academic and professional support of staff, parents, spouses, relatives, student leaders, alumni, and friends whose self-sacrifice and encouragement 
have supported so many of you through your courses. I wish you every success and God's blessing as you enter the next phase of your careers. Graduates, you are joining a large and distinguished group of alumni of Avondale. Congratulations. It's my great privilege to introduce to you our guest speaker for today. Born in Malaysia, Dr Jeannie Trudell has been President and CEO of Christian Heritage College in Carindale, Queensland since the beginning of this year. She came to Australia to finish school and university before moving to the US. So Jeannie has a global background, having lived and worked in three countries. Her calling to Christian higher education involves serving in a couple of American universities before returning to Australia. Through various organisations, she was a mediation trainer and organisation development consultant in the corporate and non-profit sectors in the US. As an academic, she has taught graduate and undergraduate courses and led a business school. Formerly a solicitor in Melbourne, she enjoyed her time as a court-appointed approved mediator in Los Angeles, Boston and Louisville. She has a strong interest in conflict management in the workplace. She enjoys travelling and learning different languages in order to connect with others. I'm going to try her out with Pidgin English later. Her passion is for students to be ignited with the love of Christ and she loves to pray for people. I know that. Jeannie has a law degree and a bachelor's in economics from Monash University, a master's in behavioural science specialising in negoti negotiation and conflict management from California State University, and a PhD in organisational development from the University of Louisville, USA. It's our pleasure to have Jeannie and her husband Grant with us today. Please join me in welcoming 
Dr. Janie Trudell to the podium. Thank you for a wonderful, warm welcome. Pastor Glenn Townend, Mr. Greg Piper, President Ron Felt, most distinguished honorees, dedicated family, friends, faculty, and to each of the amazing graduates before us today. Thank you for giving me this great honor to be part of this wonderful day at Avondale. I've attended many commencements, including a few of my own, and I can honestly say that I can't remember what was said by the speakers. I can, however, tell you that the ones that I enjoyed were short, <laughs> to the point, and infused with practical truths. Do not worry, I won't keep you longer than the two hours I was told to take this morning. <laughs> well, actually, in the, in, in the brief moments we have, I shall endeavor to share some words, hopefully of practical value, that you may remember, at least until lunchtime, who of you have toyed with the idea of writing a book at some point or another? Right? Yeah, I see a few hands. You can, you're sort of shy about it. I've had many thoughts about writing a book, maybe about my life or on how to manage, instead of, uh, manage conflict instead of creating conflict. Wouldn't that be good? Maybe you'll buy a copy. According to polls, about 80% of Americans surveyed are wannabe authors. Unfortunately, I couldn't find the Aussie equivalent for the stats related to, to, to um, people wanting to be authors. Assuming that there are a number of us who think that we'd like to write a book, today's technology and access certainly makes it a lot more possible than before. In 2017, Forbes' list of highest paid authors include John Grisham, yes, anyone? Yep and Nora Roberts, they were tied at $14 million each, US. Dan Brown at 20 million, James Patterson, crime thrillers, at 84 million, and guess who's the highest one? J.K. Rowling, $95 million, 2017. Which such, with such success stories, it's little wonder that a number of us cherish the idea of becoming a popular author. Additionally, the numbers of self-published books hit over one million titles just last year. Well, let's not assume that every published book is readable and enjoyable, right? <laughs> what would be the title of your book? Assuming you're, you're a children's author, I can share a, a few titles that would not work. Something like, you're different and that's bad. Or how about this, some puppies can fly. That would not be good, would it? Allow me to draw an analogy about being an author because today it's as if you are completing and celebrating a chapter in your life. And your life, if it is written as a book, will consist of many chapters. These chapters are yet to be created. The verses that include Mark 519 reveals a story about a man's life at two defi defining points. In some ways, it's as if they were taken from pages of at least two chapters in this man's life. Drawing on both the analogy and the Bible verse, I'm going to share with you just four points, it won't take for two hours, that hopefully will be practical truths for the next chapters in your life. Number one, persistence. Do not give up. According to an article in Huffington Post, 96% of authors' works are rejected by agents. Madeline Engel's A Wrinkle in Time was rejected 25 times before it was finally accepted for publication. Anne Frank's A Diary of a Young Girl was rejected 15 times. Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone was rejected 12 times. And, and Rowling was told not to quit her day job. Imagine that. Rudyard Kipling, the author of Jungle Book, was told he didn't know how to use the English language. And Louisa May Alcott, Little Women, was told to stick to teaching. And Dr. Seuss was told that his books were too different from other juveniles on the market to warrant his selling. He's the ninth best-selling fiction writer of all time. We would not have known any of these literary giants had they not persisted. 
It's because of your determination and persistence that you're here today. Certainly, you have experienced the hard slog of completing exams, practicums, assessments, the late nights, perhaps some of them at the library to actually study. Understandably, some of the angst is due to pro procrastination, but you persisted. And there were times when you felt like giving up, but you didn't. Consider Abraham Lincoln. This man had failures every decade of his life. At 21, he failed in business. He was defeated in a political race at 22, lost his sweetheart at 26, nervous breakdown at 27. That was just in his 20s. And he lost a number of political races at ages 34, in his 40s. And then finally, at age 52, he became president of the United States. Would you call him a failure? Defeat for him was part of life's journey. They were like pause points or detours. The same goes for Betty Cuthbert, a famous Australian Olympic athlete. After her first Olympics, she was going for her second in 1960 when a torn leg muscle led her to retirement. She persisted and prepared for the 1964 Tokyo Olympics. She did not win in the heats or semifinal, but guess what? She ended up winning the final of the 400 meters. Do you see a theme? Success stories are really stories of failure with a bounce back or redirection. John Maxwell in his book, Failing Forward, Turning Mistakes into Stepping Stones for Success, stated that the difference between average people and achieving people is their perception and response to failure. This is the key to people's ability to accomplish what they set out to do. Maxwell advocates that we stop failing backward and start failing forward. Persistence is a discipline and choice. It's not dependent on chance. It can be cultivated, learn, and move for, and fail forward. I graduated from law school many moons ago, before the earth crusted over, before selfies. I applied to dozens of law firms for what was then known as an article clerk position. I can tell you, I had enough rejections that I could probably wallpaper a whole room in my house. Didn't give up. My husband and I prayed and he had much faith, reassuring me that God has a placement for me. At the last hour, I did receive a placement at a Christian law firm in Melbourne. The support of people around me kept me going. This leads me to point number two. Support and wise counsel. Every successful author has a network, extensive network of supporters, agents, publishers, readers, editors, friends, and family to support and encourage. Surround yourself with wise counsel, people that you can rely on and trust to give you feedback, those who can speak truth into your life so that you can improve on your writing, on what you're doing, and then your chapters can flow more smoothly your characters fleshed out more fully. Sometimes the feedback can be brutal and cause you to pause. Recently, I submitted a chapter for an edited, ed edited volume titled Encyclopedia of the UN, United Nations, Sustainable Development Goals, Quality Education. Don't get too excited. I came to the same conclusion as, as you. I'm not quitting my day job because I don't think I'm gonna make as much as J.K. Rowling. The chapter was reviewed and the feedback was that I had to adjust and make um, some corrections. My initial reaction was, what? I've got nothing left. It took a lot to squeeze all those words out of me. After calming down, I went to a, to a trusted academic fr uh, writer friend who gave me some feedback, worked on it some more and resubmitted. Your supporters will also help you stop your pity parties and get back on track. The extent to which you are teachable and open to feedback will result in a better written story of your life. How teachable are you to receive counsel and advice? Point number three, and this one is one of my all-time favorites. Allow God to interrupt your life. Writers are advised that in developing their main character in a story, the plot can go in any direction depending on the idiosyncrasy or flaw ascribed to the character. A writer can outline a book and then change the direction of plot completely. In life, it is good to have a plan, 
Some of you seem to have your lives mapped out, while some have no plan at all. Whichever describes you, allow God to interrupt what you are doing and redirect you. It leads to amazing results. It may not be the plan or path that you have chosen, but believe me, it is better than good. Saul of Tarsus in the Bible was interrupted in his shining career pursuing and persecuting Jews. Jesus interrupted his life on the road to Damascus, and the rest is indeed, indeed his story, God's story. He became Paul the Apostle. What an incredible testimony, eh? The Aussie is coming out. Dietrich Bonhoeffer, one, a famous theologian who gave his life for the sake of the gospel, he was um, killed by Hitler in the 40s. In his book, Life Together, the classic exploration of Christian community wrote, we must be ready to allow ourselves to be interrupted by God. God will be constantly crossing our paths and canceling our plans by sending us people with claims and petitions. These interruptions are often related to serving others. As you've heard, your own Dr. Wendy Jackson assented to God's interruption on her life from serving as a medical doctor to being commissioned into pastoral ministry. This is a quote from her, and I love this. Saying yes to God has brought peace and contentment, enabled me to work in an area about which I'm passionate, and helped me understand my deep need to depend wholly on my Heavenly Father. As a result, I have become acutely aware of God's mercy and faithfulness. Say yes to God. In Mark 9, 5, 19, Je Jesus interrupted the formerly possessed man's plans and redirected him. That was not the first time. In the previous verses, the man was beset by demons, not in his right mind. Chains could not hold him. Jesus interrupted his life, set him free. Then the man thought he had the best plan. Why doesn't he follow Jesus? Again, Jesus interrupted his plan, told the man to go back to his own people, his home, and share what the Lord has done for me. And this brings me to the last point, the transformative power of testimony. Writers are advised that a compelling story involves the main character either finding grace or reject growth and stick with that crippled, familiar life to the end. How like real life that is, eh? Testimonies are stories about what God has done and present the contrast of your life now compared to that of your past. We testify about God's power, redeeming grace, and our identity in Christ through the choices we make and our actions. Why does Jesus tell the former um, demoniac to go and tell others what he has done? Mark 5.20 details the results of the man's testimony. All the people were amazed. Testimonies encourage and inspire others in their faith, helping them to overcome their obstacles and draw them to Christ. The focus is on God, and the outcome is about others. Giving testimony also limits our becoming prideful. It is not all about you. Sorry if that's news to you. The most exciting book that you can write is about the transformative work of Christ in and through you. You have a choice to have your story become his story or merely history. Make your one life count. It's a great honor to share this day with you. Savor every moment of your achievement. Go into the world, wherever you're called, and make a difference knowing who you are and give testimony of what God has done at every turn. I finish with some words from a very famous doctor, Dr. Seuss. You're off to great places. Today is your day. Your mountain is waiting, so get on your way. Thank you. We begin the presentation of awards by inviting the graduates to stand. Distinguished guests, Mr. President, faculty and staff, graduates and invited guests, it's my pleasure to present to you 320 graduates, candidates who have completed the requirements of their programs of study, with 14 candidates having completed two awards. 
These awards include four candidates for PhD awards, one candidate for an MPhil award, 44 candidates for postgraduate coursework awards, two candidates for honours awards, 211 candidates for bachelor degree awards, two candidates associate, associate degree awards, and 56 candidates for vocational education and training awards. As Acting Vice President of Academic and Research, I certify to Pastor Glenn Townend, Chair of the Avondale College Council, and to Dr. Michelle Allen, Charles Sturt University Chancellor and University Council Chair, that the Avondale Academic Board and Charles Sturt University Council have conferred, confirmed that the candidates before you have fulfilled the requirements for their respective degrees. Having got through that, the candidates are invited to sit and pay attention to the marshals who will stand you up a row at a time and bring you up to the front. I've been asked to point out that as the names are read, those who have indicated to the registrar that they wish to uh, receive the award in absentia, um, their names are in the program, but they will not be read out loud. Now, a little speech prepared about uh, what's different about this year. Uh, yes, it is indeed the uh, year that Avondale is graduating five higher degree by research students and this is so far uh, the highest number of HDR students we have graduated. So there are four students graduating from the Doctor of Philosophy Award and I begin by reading out the name of uh, Warwick Long. His thesis was entitled Australian University Accounting, Accounting Academics, The Lived Experience. Warwick. Uh, Anthony McPherson, his thesis was called The Great Controversy as a Theodicy Response to the Evidential Problem of Evil. Anthony. Peter Williams, whose thesis was entitled School Leadership Succession. Andre, sorry, I've skipped one. Andre. <laughs> Andre came all the way from the US, and it'll be just terrible to miss his name out. Andre Reese, thesis The Day of Atonement in the Book of Revelation. Andre. come to Peter Williams. The thesis was entitled School Leadership Succession in a Faith-Based Education System, Perceptions of Different Hierarchical Levels. Peter. <laughs> uh, we come to a special award of a student in our doctoral program Pastor Brian Jay, who tragically died earlier this year. And we wanted to spend time acknowledging Brian, um, his wife Retta and daughter Esther are here today. Um, his wife has provided me with a brief life sketch which traces Brian's steps from Korea to Australia, to the US and back to Australia. 
and she finishes by stating, Brian published many articles in local papers, Korean magazines and the signs, etc. He also published books for children and on marriage counselling, as well as Star Wars, a novel based on the great controversy. Brian was a great children's storyteller, counsellor, pastor, husband and father who inspired and touched the lives of so many people as he shared the love of his God. We'd invite Esther to come up and receive a certificate which has the following words. This certificate acknowledges that Brian J has achieved several important milestones while enrolled in the Doctor of Philosophy degree at Avondale College of Higher Education. Prior to his untimely death, Brian had successfully been confirmed into his degree and was making good progress in gathering data for his dissertation. The title of his dissertation was to have been A Study of Factors Conducive to Church Growth in Selected Australian Korean Churches. Esther. Our final HDR student is Grace Paulson, whose thesis wasn't called, uh, who's graduating from a Master of Philosophy Award. Her thesis was, is entitled Esther and Hadassah, a Comparative Study of Female Agency. Grace. For the degree of Master of Arts, Ayasaki Kabu. <laughs> Hayden Peterson. For the Graduate Diploma of Ministry and Theology, Ross Craig. <laughs> Marius Jigal. Christopher Kirkwood. Hayden Peterson. <laughs> Jamison Pulilisi. the award of Master of Education, Nicholas James Cashin. <laughs> Maria Volau Thorkanasinga. <laughs> Leah Crawford. Grace Gates. <laughs> Angie Gail Darlene Gibson. <laughs> Jothan Kingston.
Damien Ridley. Alicia Ryan. Andrea Marie Thompson. For the award of Master of Leadership and Management, Fraser Alekivu. Darily Artus. Colin Crabtree. Yeah. David Gibson Philo. Anne Gilly. Paul Lewis. Tai Mokoroa. Edwina Elizabeth Spooner. For the degree of Master of Teaching, secondary. Christopher Martia Cesar Jones. <laughs> With distinction, Charlotte Elizabeth Martin. With distinction, distinction, Jessica Ann Matler. <laughs> Reshmi Pravin Palay. <laughs> David Alexander Williams. Master of Teaching Primary, Megan Davis. With distinction, Claire Day. With distinction, Leslie Dawn Harmer. With distinction, Elizabeth Meehan. <laughs> Rowan Sturt Pye. <laughs> Coming to the award of Graduate Diploma in Lifestyle Medicine, we have William Randall Lorenzo Berry. <laughs> Chawana Maiwalu. <laughs> we now have uh, two honours awards. Uh, the first is a Bachelor of Arts, Bachelor of Teaching Secondary Honours. Uh, for Michaela Jane Latham. Uh, she earned <laughs> honours class two, division one for the thesis, art making in school and its impact on student well-being. Our second honours um, is Michaela Marie Pratt, 
Honours Class 2, Division 1, and her thesis was Adult Reflection on an Adolescent Experience of a Natural Disaster, a Qualitative Study. For the award of Bachelor of Arts, Kyle David Armstrong. Holly Angela Bayench. Larice Baisley. Mina Bacchino. Kayla May Carter. With distinction, Linda Sirik. Samuel Stephen James Duke. Alexander Berend John Hilberts. Francisca Cato. <laughs> Sally Marie Coritamana. Lucinda D. Maxwell. With distinction, Janae Menzi. Bethany Claire Morrow. Kara Ontanu. Kim Suzanne Parmenter. Carl Bruce Rams. Rachel Fay Rankin. <laughs> Madeline Reynolds. <laughs> Rochelle Ann Richards. With distinction, Emily May Schultz. Dale Andrew Smedley. With distinction, Karen Marie Walker. Jessica Ward. <laughs> For the award of Bachelor of Nursing. Kira Nicole Ainsworth. Jessica May Axthelm.
Hayley Louise Bancroft. Jenna Lee Bath. Genevieve Borg. Jacqueline Brooks. Kyla Budden. <laughs> Elaine Sami Chun. John Desmond Collins. Sarah Jane Corbin. <laughs> Megan Davies. <laughs> Brandon Donaldson. And with distinction, Michaela Enterman. <laughs> Casey Lee Ezzi. <laughs> Melissa Jamie Faulkner. Brenton Fillmore. <laughs> Caitlin Freeman. <laughs> With distinction, Leslie Gordon. Stephen Goreski. <laughs> Bethany Green. <laughs> Anna Gregory. <laughs> Jonathan Herford. Ellie Hogarth. Georgia Hughes. Tiari Huia Hua Hunter Ryan. Kirsty Hutton. Matthew James. Elise Renee Jenkins. Tali Bree Johnson. Jessica Marie Elizabeth Kent. <laughs> Trudy Klein Kathofa. <laughs> Samantha Laidlaw. Mark Joshua Lee. <laughs> 
Sala Lueni Gila. Brooke Rose Lohman. Isabel Ma. Kelsey Manuel. Hannah Martin. With distinction, Saskia Ashlyn Martin. Cecilia Maturur. Rachel Marie McDonald. Gracia Blanca Milan. With distinction, Susan Moya. Joanna Lee Emily Minter. With distinction, Susan Moyer. Jasper Morito. Riley Norton. <laughs> Tiana Rose Norton. <laughs> Catherine Rachel Nelson. Cassandra Nichols. <laughs> Emmeline Nyasagama. <laughs> Sophie O'Keefe. Karen Marie Olson. <laughs> Sheldon Magaka Omwamba. <laughs> Hannah Samuel Jill Parker. Repal Patel. <laughs> Tegan Elise Perry. <laughs> Jeshua Satavi Pichurin. Francine Hogson. <laughs> Susanna Rajapati. <laughs> Sarah, 
Samantha Lee Priestley. Mia Beth Rains. Asmita Raut. Monica Kayla Robel. Shekina Shavel Rahpati. <laughs> Joanna Savoy. <laughs> Yag Amakuma Shah. Zoe Caroline Simonson. <laughs> Donald Albert Christopher Smith. <laughs> Isabel Saravaki. Molly Suzonski. <laughs> Rachel Jane Stanley. <laughs> Laura Jane Tasker. Jack Richard Thompson. <laughs> Molly Rose Turish. <laughs> Catherine Ann Tubb. <laughs> Emma Terrell. Marion Maralitoi. <laughs> Zenica Daniela White Garcia. <laughs> With distinction, Justine Marie Williams. Abel Zuzik. <laughs> For the Bachelor of Ministry and Theology, Reese Campbell Charlson. <laughs> Aniel Diochi. Fabian Edian. <laughs> Kalia Elise Harders. <laughs> Midori Larome. Caitlin Rose Cross Nelson. <laughs> P 
Priscilla Maria Suse. Andrew William James Pratt. Luke Raymond Reeves. Siosi Nomini Ramoni. Michaela Dawn Truscott. Eleon Junior Arduatafiso. Dan Orville Paulson Wilson. Christopher Marcus Winch. For the Bachelor of Theology, Karina Lee Joy. For the Associate Degree in Theological Studies, Bruce Mason. Degree of Bachelor of Arts, Bachelor of Teaching, Declan James Ackland. <laughs> Eleanor Grace Beecham. <laughs> Megan Elizabeth Bull. Miljana Kurtovic. For the award of Bachelor of Arts, Bachelor of Teaching Secondary, Jessica Began. Brittany Campbell. With distinction, Gavin James Clark. Adam Cullen. Jade Marie Deves. Jade Ann Dobson. <laughs> Lindsay Gates. <laughs> With distinction, Belinda Kent. With distinction, Johanna Ariel Kingston. Pepe Latu. Bianca Mags.
Emma Jane McEwen. Samantha McNeil. <laughs> Melanie Rays. <laughs> Zachary Stephen Sneddon. Mark Takuera. <laughs> Ruben Tierney. <laughs> For the award of Bachelor of Education Secondary, Luke Heckendorf. Damy Kia. <laughs> Jade Nichols. Pauline Tanay Shiri Tamanalevu. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> Christy Whitton. For the award of Bachelor of Science, Bachelor of Teaching, Madeline Bree Carr. <laughs> Brianna Davies. <laughs> Olivia Frew. Michaela Jane Harris. With distinction, Rebecca Robinson. Our next award is the Bachelor of Arts, Bachelor of Teaching, Primary. Georgina Elizabeth Battle. <laughs> Tanika Bell. <laughs> Michaela Jade Blake. Lachlan Edwards. <laughs> Joshua Greenwell Smith. <laughs> With distinction, Kylie Meg Herman. Victoria Rose Hutchings. <laughs> Kalina Nicole Jack. <laughs> Emma Jane McEwen. 
Emily Owen. Tiana Elizabeth Parsons. <laughs> Emily Jane Trott. <laughs> Shani Joyce Truscott. Shana Walsh. The award of Bachelor of Education Primary. Christopher James Bull. Diane Marie Dixon. <laughs> James Dale Eastwood. <laughs> Nicholas Mystery McNabb. Tylee Robinson. <laughs> For the award of Bachelor of Arts, Bachelor of Teaching, Birth to 12 Years. Madison Banks. With distinction, Sophie Helen Payne. For the award of Bachelor of Education, Early Childhood Primary, birth to 12 years, Jessica Murray. Catherine Taylor. <laughs> For the award of Bachelor of Education, Early Childhood, Birth to Five Years, wow. Gemma Bodley. <laughs> With distinction, Adriana Fiore. Stephanie Pugolesi. <laughs> Victoria Takuera. <laughs> Kylie Woolley. For the award of Bachelor of Business, Joseph Ayu. <laughs> Enzo Bocchino. Andrew James Bradley. <laughs> Tanner Scott Brooking. <laughs> Chris
Chris Josiah Chapman. <clears throat> Daniel Leviamet. <clears throat> Yamani Nagalupali. Rahul Palakodeti. With distinction, Sarah Joanne Rosenberg. Damien Smith. Vilan Salman. Christine Tucker. Moving to the award Bachelor of Science. With distinction, Casey Jacinta Butler. With distinct, distinction, Jonathan Ginn. <laughs> Jace Alexander Hoken. <laughs> Madeline Hoken. Alison Lamplow. <laughs> Rochelle Puga. <laughs> Joshua Van Bezuin. Nicholas James Van Bezuin. <clears throat> For the award of Diploma of Outdoor Education, Jo Marie Babbitted. Alexandria Michelle Babongi. <laughs> Josephine Esther Hanbury Prakonalig. <laughs> Amelia Jasmina Mitchell. Liam Shuttleworth. <laughs> For the award of both the Certificate 3 and Certificate 4 in Outdoor Education, Tegan Beck. Fraser Burns. <laughs> Iden De La Salle. <laughs> Nadia Chloe Cole.
Sophie Cole. Austin Simeone Halle. Rowan David Liam Josie. Vivan Avian Mosquito. Zach Lawrence Morgan. Eva Rose Pike. Hein Rams. Salai Joseph Yortha Bobbin Tire. Zach Watson. For the award of Certificate 4 in Presenting Community Health Education Programs, Leslie Gwen Castro. Vania Chu. Jane Christina Gibson. Valkyo Tomek. I know most of you are aspiring to do my job at graduation, <laughs> but congratulations. And uh, as chairperson of the governing council of Avondale College of Higher Education, I affirm all of you here who have received your awards today. You've reached the rigorous, rigorous standards of academic achievement expected of the graduates of this institution. With pleasure, I pronounce you, not graduands, graduates. <laughs> and just remember that you're graduates of Avondale College of Higher Education. And so on behalf of the Governing Council, I welcome you to a group of very distinguished men and women who have gone before you, the alumni. And I can personally welcome you twice, if you can do that. Uh, we honour and commend you for your achievement, and we are very confident that what you have learnt here and experienced here will equip you for your life. Avondale is known and respected for producing graduates of the highest academic calibre and was good to see those that graduated with distinction. 
However, Avondale is respected for much more than just academic achievement, which you've all achieved. The distinguishing character of Avondale College is that it is a Christian education institution and run by the Seventh-day Adventist Church, which operates the largest education system in the world for any Protestant group. It's founded, therefore, on Jesus Christ and his ideals and encourages students and faculty towards following him and being of service. It is this commitment to service and the integrity of their Christian ethos that sets Avondale staff, who have done a really good job, and I know you know that because you wouldn't be there without them, and also you as graduates. The staff of this College of Higher Education have endeavoured to share with you its ethos and mission and facilitate your personal and professional growth through the integration of spiritual, intellectual, emotional, personal and professional values. These values, you have said, will become your story. And I wish you the success of the former demoniac, because if you actually read on to chapter 7 and 8, when Jesus goes again to that area across the border, his story had effect. There were over 4,000 men, let alone others, who were there to greet him. I wish you that kind of success with your story. As graduates, you've been challenged to discover God and seek your place in the universe in connection with him and serving those around you. So it's now my privilege to charge you and I'd ask you to stand for the charge and remain standing um, after the charge. I charge you, as graduates of Avondale College of Higher Education, in this year of 2018, to go from here with your story and his story, and continue to serve God and humanity in practical ways. I charge you to value, to live and to share the Christian ethos conveyed to you in word and deed by the staff of this institution. I charge you to demonstrate the positive effect of this Christian faith in your personal and professional life. I charge you to live by the values of excellence, fairness, integrity and professionalism which Avondale has shared with you. I charge you in your professional lives of service to church, community and country to always aim to do your best, nothing else will do. I charge you to be faithful to yourself, to your personal and your professional values, to your fellow men and women and to your God. And now as you step into your future, we want your lives to follow our God. And our prayer is for you that God's sustaining and empowering presence will be with you. I invite you to commit yourselves without reserve in whatever field of endeavour that you have chosen to the service of God and to the service of of the communities that you will serve. God bless you.
can sit. <laughs> Good afternoon. Now, saving the best for last, my name is Bianca Maggs and I am the class president of the Lake Macquarie campus. My name is Michaela Enterman and I am the co-president for the Sydney campus. <laughs> Mr. President, distinguished guests, lecturers, graduates, family, friends and humble entourage, thank you so much for being here to celebrate this day with us. Together, we've made it to the end of another academic year where webmail will cease to bombard you with emails and Moodle can finally be deleted from your favorites tab. <laughs> Today, graduates, this is an academic milestone. May you reflect on this moment throughout your ups and downs of life and remind yourself of what you can accomplish with a little hard work, determination, and a few all-nighters. On behalf of the graduating class of 2018, I would like to thank Avondale College and Charles Sturt University for providing us the opportunity to study. I would also like to thank our lecturers for your wisdom and patience. Thank you to all of the family and friends of the graduates. Without your support, love, encouragement, and money, <laughs> most of us probably wouldn't be here today. And thank you to the staff, ushers, volunteers, musicians, ladies who have pinned our regalia, and the other helpers who have helped make this weekend very special. And to my personal sponsors, although I'm sure many of you can relate, thank you to Rejuve Cafe for the coffees, <laughs> thank you for the 24-hour Morris at Maccas, Kleenex for some of those tears, and of course, cite this for me. But most importantly, I would like to thank God. Thank you for writing this chapter into our lives and for answering a lot of pre-exam prayers. So graduates, I hope that your Avondale College experience has been full and not just full of forum posts. As you begin your professional lives, may you be blessed with the wisdom and discernment to never compromise your values. And as you go out into the world, Share your story, and maybe one day, wherever you go, you'll have the opportunity to share his story too. Thank you. Thank you, Bianca. Distinguished guests, dignitaries, Professor Rohenfeld, staff and faculty, family and friends, and graduates, welcome. Bianca and I stand here before you to represent the class of 2018. We represent your determination, your passion, your consistency, your hard work, and all the obstacles that led us to this day. If there is one thing I have learnt from this, it's that it is impossible to sum up three or more years in three minutes. But I cannot leave here without taking this short time to pass on my deep and overwhelming sense of gratitude to some key figures. I want to thank Gough Whitlam for inventing government-funded education, <laughs> Centrelink for paying my way through college, and Wikipedia and Sitefast for giving me a chance. <laughs> but in all seriousness, our journey to this point would not have been possible without some very special people, and I'd like to recognise and thank them. I know I speak for so many of you when I say your journey to this point would not have been possible without the author of life, creator, saviour, father and friend, God. You are the core to our success and the reason we are standing here today, degree in hand. Thank you for strength in weakness, joy in sorrow, comfort in hard times, and knowledge and memory when our cramming attempts in the exam hall fell short. Lecturers and staff, to you we owe a significant portion of our success. We are so excited to be standing here at the end of this chapter with our degree in our hands. Over the last three or more years, you have become mentors, inspirations, and dare I say it, friends. Thank you for your your love, your grace, your guidance, your knowledge, your patience, your inspiration, and your passion. You have dedicated your working life to our development. 
Your influence has driven and encouraged us to achieve greatness, and you have patiently and calmly handled our panic-stricken emails and visits to your office with love and wisdom. Thank you, Avondale, for knowing us by name and not by number. To our family and our loved ones, we are so excited to share this milestone with you. You have endured a great deal of stress, fear, and frustration at our hands. You have loved, supported, and occasionally dragged us through this degree, but your love for us remains unchanged. We want to thank you and apologize for the extra wrinkles, gray hairs, and sleepless nights. Thank you for believing in us, even when we didn't believe in ourselves. Thank you for your prayers, and thank you for being here today. Graduates, friends, comrades, over th thank you for your shared support and suffering. There have been times over the last few years where life felt like soup and we were forks. <laughs> In fact, I'm pretty sure Charles Dickens was referring to college when he so eloquently penned, it was the best of times and it was the worst of times. It was the best of times going out with friends despite looming deadlines and it was the worst of times when you had to cram five weeks worth of research into one night. It was the best of times when we didn't have to show up to class when they became optional. And it was the worst of times when the exams were based off readings and lectures that we never went to or never did. And it was the best and worst of times when we heard those all too comforting words, oh, I haven't started yet either. <laughs> we have endured essays, speeches, group assignments, presentations, reflections, reflections on reflections, Quizzes, exams, and placements. We've been challenged by Moodle, been dobbed on by Turnitin, and fought the magnetic draw of procrastination. We leave here with new friends, memories, keepsakes, extra weight, and $200 textbooks still unopened. <laughs> but here we are, degree in hand, graduating class of 2018. It's been an absolute privilege to journey alongside you. As you leave here today, remember each one of you have a story to tell. That story has the power to inspire others, bring comfort, broaden understanding, awaken new possibilities, and navigate change. Whether you nurse, teach, preach, counsel, create, play, help, or lead, whatever capacity you find yourself in today, you are vehicles of stories of care, compassion, and courage. Never forget the power of your story. Today is only the end of a chapter. And as we begin the next chapter of our lives, we may face difficulty and change. But therein lies the beauty of our story. I want to leave you with a thought. You can't skip chapters. That's not how life works. You have to read every line, meet every character. You won't enjoy all of it. Heck, some chapters will make you want to cry for weeks. You'll read things you don't want to read, and you'll have moments where you don't want the pages to end. But you have to keep going. Stories keep the world revolving. So live your story, and then go tell your story. Thank you. Thank you, Bianca and Michaela. I hope that response wasn't a reflection on a reflection, but it was really beautiful and well said. Can I just invite the graduates who, it's a joyous word to say, could you please stand? And can I invite the staff and the platform party to stand as well for the benediction? Lord God, as the graduating class of 2018 have affirmed this weekend in their story and in our collective story, you have given us a mind to know you, a will to serve you and a heart to love you. We ask that your spirit may give us the will and the courage to act to make a difference in order to make real your kingdom amongst us so that we can live together in peace, truth, justice and love, sharing the resources of the earth. 
Give us the grace and commitment to work for the things that we pray for. Amen.